Okay, so for this first test, what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of tiny SAs, and then we're going to inject a signal from them. These are set into signal generator mode, not spectrum analyzer mode. I've got tons of videos that show how to do that, and we'll take a little bit of a look at it here. Um, each one of these is going to set a signal into this uh, splitter. Now, I did a video on the splitter, so you can check that out if you want. I'm not really happy with it, and we're kind of using it in a way that you're not supposed to. Typically what you would do is you would have like an antenna or something here, and then you'd have two receive radios coming off of here. And it would uh, split the signal coming from the antenna so you could listen with some attenuation to signals on your radios. When you transmit into a device like this, and we tested all this, um, you have to worry about things like isolation between these two ports because I don't want the signal from here going into here. That could be problematic, and it does, but it doesn't do it at enough of a level to impede this test. And then we're going to also inject a signal from here at a different frequency. And we're going to have that come out here. It's going to go out this cable through this attenuator. So we lose about 3.5 dB uh, in the guts of this. And then we lose um, 40 dB here. So we have to adjust for negative 43 dB of attenuation. And then it's going to come into the talk pod. And so what we're going to do with the talk pod is have this set on a particular receive frequency and the receive frequency is 147, uh, 000. And so that's what we're going to inject a signal from here. Now, the signal we're injecting from here is around an S4 level signal, which is pretty strong. And then we are going to use a strong signal at negative 50 dBm. Uh, here, we're going to be somewhere around uh, negative 113 dBm. And what we'll see is the effects of signals on different frequencies. On here, we are at 14652. So it's about half of a uh, megahertz or 500 kilohertz away, which is pretty far. And it's to demonstrate the ability of a talk pod to reject signals that are not on its intended frequency. Uh, when it can't do that, the radio becomes desensitized. Some people call that overload and it stops working correctly. Um, it's a very common thing to happen if you are in RF rich environments. And this is one way that we can replicate this test here in a controlled environment and test some other radios. We're also gonna compare it against this Baofeng UV5R, and then we're gonna compare it against another radio as a surprise towards the end and see if it's any better. All right, so we're zoomed in on the tiny SA that we're gonna use as our control. Right now, our output is off. But um, we set our frequency to 147000. Our level is negative 113 dBm, which is, I think it's around somewhere around an S4, like I mentioned before. Um, our modulation is a one kilohertz tone and FM deviation is three kilohertz. And that is normal setting for this type of thing. Uh, we're not sweeping, so that's gonna be off. And our external gain, this is the attenuation through the device and our attenuator is negative 43.5 dBm. Output is a sinusoidal wave. Now, when I turn this on, you can see the radio comes on. And you can hear, you should be able to hear that tone just fine. I'm going to turn it down a little bit because it's annoying. Um, what we're going to do on a signal that is pretty far away, 14652, so it's about a half of a megahertz, close to 500 kilohertz away. Um, we're going to inject a 50, negative 50 dBm signal. Now, that's a pretty strong signal. But it's not uncommon if you're in an RF rich environment to come across signals that strong if somebody's transmitting near you or something like that, um, or if you're near a transmission tower. Uh, we're doing an 800 kilohertz tone, so it's a little bit of a different sound, and we're doing narrow FM. The capabilities of the Tiny SA versus the Tiny SA Ultra, which is the other one, are a little bit different. Um, our external gain, again, is this one is at negative 43. I guess I should have put 43.5, but 43 is close enough, and it really doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have this one on, and you can hear our tone coming through the radio. I'm going to turn it down a little bit because it's kind of annoying. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the, we'll call it semi-adjacent channel. And you can probably hear that static already. And there it is, it just went dead. It's not because I'm turning this up and down, it's not because of what I was doing. Let me go ahead and turn this off. And the radio comes back to life. Let me go ahead and turn this on again. And we'll give it a couple seconds. But what happens in these radios is they have a direct conversion receiver. And it has to generate a tone for the mixing component of the incoming signal. And it starts to get confused when it hears multiple tones. I don't think it's going to die on us again. 
let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll turn this one off. Turn that back on. We'll turn this one on. And see what happens. The other thing I notice is that if you adjust the level of this signal, it will impact it. So let's just say let's go down a little bit. See, it just died. Let me turn this one off. And it's on. Let me turn this one on. And it just died again. Uh, this is a negative 113. So it, it, it's a little sensitive when you do that. Um, I think this is something that's expected with these types of radios. Let me go ahead and connect the Balfang so we can see how it performs. Okay, so now we have the Balfang connected and we are at 147000. Let's go ahead and turn the signal on. There you go. And you can hear the signal. Let's go ahead and turn on the semi-adjacent channel. And it immediately kills it. So what we can do is we can drop the power level of this and see if that has any kind of impact here. So let's go down to 60. And it just it just came back on. So if we go up. There we go. It's around negative 53 dBm is where that cutoff is. Now, if we adjust the signal strength coming in on this one, it will also impact that. But what we wanted to show is we can demonstrate how to test this. And I had gotten some pushback in one of my videos where I said that these radios are susceptible to desensitization and overload, and they wanted to see it in action. So I think we've gotten to see that. What I want to do now is so we know this level causes it to fail. Um, it actually failed at the, at the 50 on, the, on this one. We didn't, we didn't go lower. Let me connect the Yesu radio and see what happens. All right, it's not the Yesu that I promised, but it's coming. Uh, th this is the uh, talk pod, and we're back here <clears throat> on one, uh, 147. And I want to go ahead and I want to turn this back on, and we can hear the signal coming through. And the reason I wanted to do that is, is that we did not go down to negative 53. So this was really the cutoff point for the failures in the Balfang. And I suspect that the talk pod is going to perform a little better than the Balfang, but I don't know. So let's go ahead and turn this on. And again, you can hear some of that static. But it looks like the negative 53 signal um, is okay with this radio. So let's go up a little bit and see if, what happens. 52, 51 is where it cuts off and it dies. So it's marginally better in this particular test than the Balfang. So I guess the TalkPod has got one good thing going for it. Um, again, I haven't adjusted this signal here at all but uh, if we do make this one stronger let's go ahead and add 10 db which is a lot it still didn't come back on there you go you have that we turn this on and you see it desensitize and die right away all right now we're going to get the yesu and test it out all right folks so now we're back we have the yesu connected and we are at negative 113 here let's go ahead and turn this on Okay, there you can hear the signal. And then here is our secondary. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this on. This would be the semi-adjacent channel. And you can see that it's on and at negative 50. And we have zero problem here. This is, this is not an issue. Uh, let's go ahead and, and make this signal weaker. So when we drop down to 123, it disappears. If I turn this one off, then I don't see um, that particular scenario happening. Let's turn it on and see what happens. And it dies out. So let's go ahead and drop this one. And at negative 53, it still is dying. Let's go ahead and turn it on and we'll make this signal stronger and see where our failure point is. It's doing something. So it's at negative 118 and negative 53 here. All right, folks. Um, so here's everything that we used. We went through these radios. This one performed the worst. This one was a little bit better and then this one was even better. Um, 
so I think that what we demonstrate is, is that these can be overloaded. This is a direct conversion receiver. And we did see the overload happen on the Yesu, which is a superheterodyne receiver, which is supposed to handle those conditions better. And it did. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, or any feedback even, go ahead and post it below, and I'll do my best to respond. As always, I'd like to say thanks for watching, everybody. It's greatly appreciated.